me now to help us sort it all out is Newsweek's national politics correspondent, Nina Burley. Nina, welcome. Hi, thank you. So, Nina, what do you think? Let's start with the Republicans. What do you think are the most significant stories to come out of their primary? Well, I think the most significant story is that the establishment lane, so-called lane, is up for grabs. I mean, you've got Kasich, you've got Rubio. Rubio was, you know, the third place in, in Iowa, but anointed, uh, mm. anointed the establishment winner then. Now you have another establishment winner. And these guys are, are far, far behind Trump in numbers. And I think that uh, the real takeaway is that, you know, the Republican Party better start getting used to the idea <laughs> of their candidate being Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Well, look, and, uh, to that point, <laughs> this is the, uh, the front page of the Daily <laughs> News today. This is how New York sees Trump. Obviously, the New, New Hampshire didn't see him that way. That's and right. We know him well. We know him too <laughs> the well. The other primaries, is that what it is? Well, how does No, New Yorkers love him, love him too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there was a poll recently that said, you know, Hillary and Trump are the winners in, in New York right now. They, yeah. are, they are the leaders. So I think the takeaway is that um, while we talk about Kasich he, mm -hmm. can claim a victory, well, at when else would we be talking about people picking up 15% saying <laughs> they can claim a victory? Well, it's a big only, field. Well, it's a big field, but mm -hmm. only because... There's such trepidation among the establishment about their leader. So, so can Kasich become the mainstream candidate now? Does he have, uh, does he have an apparatus in South Carolina and beyond? Uh, that I can't answer. I don't, uh, I mean, he's, he's been around a long time. He has the money, um, but I think he put a lot. He does lot, have the money? He, yes, he put, well, he doesn't have as much money as some of them, but he put a lot into New Hampshire. And I don't think that, mm -hmm. I really don't think that New Hampshire translates mm -hmm. to South Carolina, Nevada. I mean, it's a very different state. Mm -hmm. and, and that's also true for the Democrats. Donald Trump said in front of a, one of his large crowds that he was mocking the latest unemployment figures uh, that are supposed to be under 5%. And he said he was laughing at them. And he said, if those figures were correct, you, the crowd, wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. And Bernie Sanders wouldn't be doing so well. He's got a point, right? He has a point, but I have to tell you, I did some work in Atlantic City um, mm. on Trump's record with labor and with people wor who worked in Atlantic City, and it's not great. I mean, mm. he walked away from uh, a city uh, that he brags or he was used to brag about uh, making money uh, before it cratered, and there are a lot of people out of work in Atlantic City. Yeah, it may be f true for him, but I think his point was that if the economy weren't doing so badly, if regardless of the 5% under 5%, if people weren't feeling so bad about the economy, the, these outsiders wouldn't be doing so well, right? I mean, is that That's the true. I mean, I, James Carville used to say it's the economy, stupid. Right. Um, I think maybe you can boil it down to that, but I think there, there are other things going on. I mean, it's the, uh, there's, a, there's a sense of malaise. Uh -huh. There's a sense that the country isn't, isn't well. But, but let's turn to the Democrats now because, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton, as I mentioned, she lost all the votes, the majority of the votes of, of people under 65, and people who made less than $200,000 a year. Those are real weaknesses. How does she move forward with those weaknesses? Well, again, um, New Hampshire is unique, and I think that uh, if you look at the polls in 538, the predictions are from here on out, you know, this is Bernie's high point. Uh, you know, New Hampshire is like Vermont, Vermont, and they know him well up there. And I think that from here on out, the Clinton uh, machinery is going to kick in, and I think that the est the establishment Democrats are going to uh, be working f on her behalf in places like Nevada and South Carolina. But, but I do. But to to your point, um, yes, it's a huge problem. Um, that she has if she is not able to get females, especially unmarried right. females, because unmarried females are a key mm. indicator. Uh, you know, they put Obama over, and they, they, this year they will put whoever mm. they go for. Mm. Is, is, and so she's not winning the unmarried females in New Hampshire. She's not getting the young people. She's getting rich and old. Right. And, and, and she's not getting the blue-collar workers that she used to get, that she got, for example, in New Hampshire in 2008. So the point is, the common wisdom is that Bernie Sanders can't get the African-American and Hispanic votes right. down south. But the 
common wisdom was that he wasn't going to get the blue collar workers and the majority of women. So maybe right. there's a path for I mean, well, for Bernie just there, there's a very interesting statistic I got from one of the pollsters early on. This year, 2016, will be the first year that millennials potentially outnumber baby boomers hmm. in the electorate if they come out to vote. Big if, right? But he seems to be bringing them out. Dina, thank you so much. You're welcome.